Okay, so we have a um, Silver Mercy here. So, really quick about your team comp. You're running a pretty standard pirate ship. Um, you know, you've got double shield, perfect. Um, Mercy Moira, that's good. Um, you know, M Moira has lots of heals. You could also replace Moira with Baptiste in this case, because Lamp can come in uh, clutch when you guys get dove. But Moira also works, because she just has an absurd amount of healing. Um, and then you're running an Ash for your other DPS. Um, usually you want a McCree here because that stun can be valuable if you get dove by like a, uh, um, anything really. You know, one of the, um, ways to counter this pirate ship combination is, um, basically to just dive on there with high damage heroes. Um, you know, have like Reaper and, uh, Ball and things like that and just cleave through and, try and kill the Bastion, so Lamp can save you from that, and McCree can help with the stun, and but whatever, this is a good team comp. But keep in mind, Mercy is no longer considered a main healer, so your primary job is damage boosting your DPS, right? In this case, mostly your Bastion. The whole idea with these pirate ship comps is that Bastion wants to melt through their shields and just do so much damage to the enemy team that they don't have the sustain to keep through it, right? Um. However, they are running, honestly, not a terrible comp to try and counter this. You know, they've got McCree and Soldier, so they have two ranged DPS that, if they spread out, can attack from multiple angles and put lots of pressure on you and this Bastion. Um, Ball can dive in and just be annoying. Zarya Bubbles can come in clutch, however, like, Bastion can melt through her bubbles very quickly and kind of delete her, because once Zarya's bubbles down, she has no real escape, and then there's just no way their supports can keep her alive. Um, but in any case, uh, you as Mercy, your primary job should be focusing on damage boosting your DPS. That is where all your value is going to come from in this comp. Moira should be there keeping your tanks alive, and then you want to help your Bastion melt through everything very quickly. You want to kill things fast with this comp. So there, you're taking care of your Moira. That's good. You uh, you saw that your Moira was low health. Uh, that's one thing I don't see a lot of lower elo supports do, is pay attention to their other support. Uh, that's very important. You know, Moira, she does have self heal with her with her suck and her ball, but um, or her orb, whatever you want to call it. But it's always a good idea to pay attention to your other support. Keep them alive, you know. Um, you guys, as supports, have to look out for each other. But your Moira is trying to go chase down a flanking ball, um, which is not good. Uh, I damage boost your Bastion here instead of your Ash. So your damage boost only applies to their primary fire. So things like Ash's Dynamite, it doesn't affect. Um, so you know you, you want to focus primarily on damage boosting your Bastion. Um, and you almost always want to have your damage boost be beam on him. But because your Moira is off doing DPS Moira things, the fact you're kind of trying to bounce bounce between healing here is fine. Uh, you're, you're doing the best you can. You know, your Moira is effectively throwing at this point. So all this is fine so far. I'd be damage boosting your Bastion here instead of your Ash. Nice super jump. So that was good, right? You super jumped to get up and away from the ball. Uh, it's good that you know that tech, so it shows that you do know... Um, like the one little piece of tech that Mercy has that, and Mercy's bunny hop, but you don't really want to be bunny hopping in this comp. The one thing I do want to say is at this point now, you can hear their McCree. Um, you can see your Bastion's shooting in this direction, so you know that there's somebody over to your right. Um, when you're up in the air like this, you become a very easy target for enemy hitscan. Uh, so what you want to be doing is, it's good you super jumped up and away from the threat that is Ball. Um, you know, you didn't exactly need to, but it's good. You know, because Ball just wants to slam in and get out. Ball doesn't want to stay in a fight against a Bastion. Um, but, you know, if they were running a Tracer or something like that, getting doing the super jump to get up and away from her is great. But now that you're up in the air, you are a very easy target for their hit scan. So you want to drop as quickly as you can, right? Don't use your glide, because when you glide, you drop down nice and slow, and it's very easy for their DPS to take their time, line up their shots, and kill you. Yeah, see, there you got shot. And then where you dropped to is also bad. Uh, you know, you dropped down beside this tree. Uh, most of the time, you're going to have hit scan up on this high ground. 
Uh, the fact is McCree, McCree is low ground here, just kind of speaks to the fact that this is silver. Um, but when they're on high ground, you don't have a lot of cover here, right? You've got the cart and you've got the shields. So you want to kind of... You don't really want to be playing around this corner either because it's very easy for you to get flanked. But where you're standing right now, you are wide out in the open and you are very easy to get shot at, right? Or very easy to hit for enemy DPS. So as any support, you need to value your life above everything else. Um, and even when you're running double shield, you don't ever want to trust shields because they can go down, right? Reinhardt can drop his shield for a fire strike. Sigma can recall his shield. You know, if the enemy team starts focusing shields, they have a lot of heroes that can do a lot of damage to shields if they decide to all focus them so they can get melted very quickly. So you always want to try and find some kind of hard cover, something to hide behind a corner or even a car or something like that. So for the most part, when you're pushing up here, this is just a very, very wide open lane to push up. So when they have DPS up on this high ground, they can apply a lot of pressure to you. So what you want to be doing is you want to be hugging the cart and like crouching or something like that, right? Trying to minimize your sight lines to that high ground, right? And then as the cart moves, you kind of want to use the cart for cover. Um, here you can kind of push around corner. Now that the Zarya is dead, um, you can kind of use this this corner here, this cover, and still damage with your Bastion. You're out of line of sight of the high ground. You can kind of uh, see if you get pressured and then fly away, right? But you never want to be standing out in the open like this. You're just a very easy target. And your Moira has spent the first, what, minute doing absolutely nothing. Like Your Moira has done nothing that she's supposed to be doing. At this point, your Moira is just playing poorly, is what it is. But that's not you. Um, nothing you can do about that. Nothing you can do about your team. You just have to try and play around what you have. So there, that was that was good. You actually backed up a little bit. You found a little bit of cover, but um, you know, immediately moved out of it. Um, healing up your Ash, that's fine. Again, your Moira should be here doing all this healing, but we'll heal your Bastion quickly. Nice, good flick. Okay, your Moira's with you now, so focus on damage boosting. Boosting your ash is fine, she's pushing up. Be careful when you do this, like this is fine and it's good you're doing this because a damage boosted ash is scary, but you know, you just have to be, so when you do things like that, um, so Mercy, people say that Mercy is a very easy hero to play and it's true, she's a very easy hero to pick up because she doesn't have a lot of mechanical skill, but the Intricacies of Mercy, she is one of the most difficult heroes to play in the game. Or, okay, that's exaggerating things, but she is a difficult hero to play. Uh, because as Mercy, you need to be aware of everything that is happening, right? That should be said for all supports, but it's even more important as Mercy, right? Because uh, your main movement ability gets you out of danger um, from your team, right? So you need to be aware of where your team is at all times so that if you get pressured, if you get into danger, you can immediately just turn, look at somebody, and use your guardian angel to fly away, right? At the same time, you also have to be aware of where the enemy is so you minimize the number of times you put yourself in those threatening situations, right? Whereas if you play heroes like Moira or Lucio, you know, Moira has Fade, which is a get-out-of-jail-free card, right? She can do whatever she wants and... You know, she has basically something that avoids damage completely and moves quickly to go back to her team. She has um, a decent amount of self-heal if she uses the ball on herself. Um, you know, Lucio has speed boost, and he's just very hard to hit in general, right? The other supports have those kind of escapes, but you don't. So when you do something like that, so, you know, when you follow your Ash up here, that's fine, right? You know, Ash is going to apply a little bit of pressure to the enemy team, build her ult, so you want to follow her in damage booster, that's good. And I liked where you stayed, right? So Ash kind of went out here to poke a little bit, and you stayed right here, which was good, right? You were able to damage boost the Ash, and you had this window so you could see your team, and if you got pressured, you could fly back, which you did. That was all really good. I liked it. Uh, your Moira is now going DPS Moira. Um, so, you know, you say in your post that your team was flaming you for not doing well. 
DPS, Moira. Moira, you are not a DPS. Um, I will say that wasn't a bad play by your Moira. You know, she saw that their soldier was on low health and she went and secured the kill. That's one thing that Moira actually does really well is um, she can chase down kills like that. Again, because she's got an escape, because, you know, her suck doesn't uh, require any mechanical aim mechanics. Her orb is, her skill orb is one of the most annoying things to deal with. Um, so that's not terrible, but once again, the rest of the team is now pushing in on your team. So it's a five versus five out here. Yes, she got one kill, so technically it's a six versus five, but out here where the team fight is happening, it's a five versus six, right? Their soldier, I think, I actually kind of want to go back to see what happened there. Again, I know this isn't on you, but this is one of those things that you need to pay attention to as Mercy, right? You need to... Um, see where your team is, you need to be aware of what's happening. Okay. So there, where is their soldier? Oh, so their soldier is just... So Ash goes up to pressure, um... So at this point, their soldier's kind of feeding. Uh, your Moira is pushing up to try and get a cheeky orb off, maybe, or something, which is fine, because, again, Moira has an escape, and they don't really have any heroes that can one-shot her. So it's an aggressive play by your Moira. Right, now she's going full DPS. Okay, yeah, so she just starts chasing down this, uh, uh, this soldier. Yeah, so... Your Moira's going full DPS, Moira, there. Like, she just went to 1v1 a soldier while the rest of your team is now engaged in a team fight. Um, so you have to be aware of that, right? You have to recognize that your Moira is going DPS, Moira, and is not really helping your team. Um, it's... Honestly, it's, it's okay that she went and chased down a kill, but now that... You know, your team is engaged in a team fight. She needs to be get back as quickly as possible, right? Because now they're all pushing in. You're in danger. You're doing your best to fly around. They have uh, Moira, right? So they have all kinds of sustain. I don't know what your Moira is doing. Um, waiting for a health pack, I guess. Hey, look, she's healing nothing. Team's full health, and she was pumping heals into absolutely nothing. Um, again, that's not on you. So what you're doing here is fine. Um, you know, you kind of, you jumped around, you were um, avoiding their their main pressure, you were damage boosting the Bastion, you were managing your teammates' health. Everything you're doing there is fine. Um, I am very mad at your Moira right now. She is... That's one of those things where that Moira at the end of the round is going to be like, oh, I've got like a damage metal, you guys need to pick things up. No, no, Moira, no, you were basically throwing. You were doing nothing to help the team. Right, your job isn't to go 1v1 the enemy DPS, your job is to keep the tanks alive. Anyway, sorry, this isn't a Moira review, it's a Mercy review. I... But, so, yeah, what you're doing is fine. You know, now you're, you're healing up your ashes, your ashes 1v1ing the enemy DPS Moira. Honestly, this is very frustrating as a DPS because Moira's got a tricky hitbox to hit. You know, she's all got all kinds of self-heal and sustain. Um, Moira's just an annoying hero to deal with in general. But... This isn't good. Um, you don't want a 1v1 of Moira as Mercy. Uh, you lose that fight, especially because she's used her heal orb, so she can outheal your damage, basically, between her own heal orb and her suck. She does more healing to herself than damage you can do. So at this point, fly back over here, damage boost your Bastion, and just tell Bastion to melt through this. Right? Bastion does... I, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but it, 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 she's dead in less than a second. If you just damage boost your Bastion and tell him to take care of the Moira. Yeah, that's that's good. You flew away from that. It's not a fight you want to take. So you have Valkyrie now. Um, 
So, also, the fact that you built your ultimate before your Moira speaks to just how your Moira is doing, right? Moira's ultimate should be building every team fight, right? She builds so much ult so quickly when she's healing, and it builds a lot slower when she just does damage or goes DPS. Um, but, yeah, it's... Anyway, so I'm interested to see how you use Valkyrie here. Generally speaking, a Valkyrie is one of those uh, team fight initiating alts, so you want to use it at the start of the team fight. Um, you want to use it to engage with, because then your entire team, anybody that it chains to, does 30% more damage, and that is just an absolutely massive buff to everybody. Uh, you become very hard to hit, and you're flying through the air, you move very quickly. It's a good ultimate. It's not a great ultimate, but it's a good ultimate. This is all well and fine. You know, I probably would have kept my beam on Bastion. Again, I don't think that would have saved him, um, but it would have kept him alive a little bit longer. And he, he, it might have been, he might have been able to be saved, right? If you had kept your beam on him instead of trying to duel the Sombra, uh, he might have stayed alive for just a quarter second longer, which realistically with your damage beam would likely be enough to kill this Moira before she kills him. But that's fine. At this point, you also need to be calling out that there's a DPS Moira on you. And you need to get out of here. Very, very risky res. Uh, because A couple of reasons. One, um, your main healer's down. Two, your Reinhardt's charging, so you have no shield. Three, your Sigma is behind you. I think your Sigma is trying to deal with this Moira. Um, no, this Moira actually got locked behind the door, but... You know, there's a Moira on you, uh, your Reinhardt's charging. Um, it's a good res to make, but whenever whenever you go for a res like this, always ask for protection, right? Always ask for a shield, right? You've got Reinhardt and Sigma. Um, just be like, hey, can I get a shield or something like that to get this res off? If you have a Zarya, you can ask for a bubble. Um, if you have a Roadhog, like, just ask, hey, Roadhog, can you body block for me, right? Roadhog has 600 health and a... Uh, self heal, right? So he can just stand in front of you and tank all the damage while you get the res off. Um, ask for some kind of protection, um, and then the other thing too is you try to want to try to find cover. So here it's kind of tricky because they are attacking from multiple angles. Um, but you, the, I, I would think the best spot here is to try and get behind cart and again crouch down. Uh, if you get as close as you can to the cart, you minimize the sight lines they have from high ground. Uh, it becomes a little bit harder to hit you from this side, right? You can, you'd still like if you're hugging this corner right here. Um, if I was a DPS over here or somebody, I could still see you, but it'd be very hard for me to hit you. So when you're going for reses, especially, always find cover, ask for shields, ask for protection, something. But good res. This is good, right? You got the res off, and you went and you found cover. This is good cover, right? It blocks sight lines to the high ground. It protects yourself from the Moira that's behind you. Uh, you are blocked from the DPS on the right. However, the one thing I do want to say is you saw your Rhine charging. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I, as I said, the, you, know, you saw your Rhine charging. YOLO charging to the enemy team. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that, right? Don't chase that Reinhardt. Don't follow that Reinhardt. Like, he's pushing himself into three people into their back line. There's nothing you can do to save him there. Don't ever put yourself in a bad position to try and save a teammate that uh, does something stupid, right? Again, we all make mistakes. It all happens. Uh, it was not a good charge by your Reinhardt, and he's going to die for it. But if you put yourself in that position, you as well are going to die. Um, in this case, like, you guys lose this team fight anyway, so you should all just die on cart as quickly as you can. But, um, Never put yourself in a compromising position to try and save a teammate that makes a mistake like that. Okay. So, that's that's fine. Um, when that happens, like when you start losing this team fight, just stay on cart and die as quickly as you can. Right? Uh, at that point, you know, when you're dying like that, try and keep your Sigma. Right? You don't want to stay alive for very long, right? So damage boost your Sigma or something like that. Try and help him build his ult quickly. Um... But the longer you stay alive, the more you stagger yourself, right? So right now, uh, you just died, your Sigma just died, so the two of you, uh, the rest of your team has pretty much respawned, right? Ryan will respawn in a second here. 
the rest of your team is ready to push in, and they have to wait like five seconds or however long it is to um for you guys to respawn before they can push in as a team again, right? So every second you stay alive, uh, the longer it takes for you to respawn. So in that situation, when you guys start to lose that team fight, when you know you're going to die anyway, um, unless you're playing like a Moira or a Lucio that has some good escape option, um, just die on cart, right? Um, just sit on cart, damage boost your Sigma, try and get him to build his ult faster, and just just die as quickly as you can, right? The longer you stay alive, the more you stagger yourself, the longer your team has to wait for a full regroup. All that stuff. The power of destruction. Fire in the hole. Back in the fight. Let's get the moving. Why, why did you fade, Moira? You wasted. I don't know what your Moira is doing. Okay. So that was okay. Um, your entire team at that point is just feeding. Like, they're pushing forward, taking unnecessary damage, but uh, that Valkyrie was okay. Like, your Ash committed Bob. It's unfortunate that your uh, Bastion died. At this point, now that you guys are off cart, it probably is time to switch off Bastion. Uh, he does have his ultimate, but realistically, against their team comp, there's not a whole lot his ultimate can do. Um, you know, uh, Sombra can get away, Lucio can get away, Moira can get away. Roadhawk can just eat the damage. Zarya can use it to build charge. The only one that it can really do much damage to is um, Soldier. So really, his ultimate is not going to be that impactful here. He should just switch off, right? Uh, again, that's not something you're going to see at lower ranks. They don't probably don't recognize that the ultimate is not going to get a lot of value. And he, he should just switch off, right? Bastion's value has is from when he can get set up on cart. Right at this point, the enemy team is going to make sure you don't get set up on cart, right? And they're running um, Sombra, they're running Hog, they're running a couple of counters to the Bastion, so his effectiveness is going to be a, is going to be harder for him to get value. Um, so, in any case, so this is an okay Valkyrie, right? Your team is starting to commit alts. It's the start of the team fight. Um, but when you pop Valk like this, you guys need to push in, right? You need to be in a position where you can damage boost Bob, so he can do work. Um, you know, you want to definitely damage boost your Sigma because he is very close to ultimate. I don't know what your Reinhardt just shattered, um, but I don't I don't think he caught anyone with it. Um looks like you're gonna go for the res here. Uh the res and well, we'll see if you go for the res. I would say the res here is not optimal. Hey, good. You're not going for the res, that's good. Uh damage boost Bob, right? There's no So when you're in Valkyrie, um you have to make the decision to damage boost or heal, right? Um, and whatever you do always chains to the people within a certain radius. So if you heal one person, it's going to chain and have your heal beam applied to everyone in that radius. So when you were healing Bob up there, you were also applying healing to your Moira, your Reinhardt, and your Sigma, all three of which did not need healing. Bob is going to go away in a couple seconds anyway, right? So it doesn't matter that they're damaging him you're going to get more value if you just damage boost, right? Um, as Mercy, when you're Valking, it's not your job to keep your entire team alive, it's your job to find value. And in a lot of cases, you're going to get more value damage boosting four people than healing one person, right? It is okay, honestly, to let one person die, especially because you have res off cooldown. So, you know, if you damage boost four people, and, you know, you were healing Bob there is what you were trying to do, just damage boost everybody, right? You damage boost everybody, everybody does more damage, Bob does more damage, Sigma does more damage, you have all kinds of poke damage. Um, honestly, Bob was kind of in a bad spot, and they used Beat to counter him, which was okay, but um, in any case, you want to damage boost there, right? Damage boosting three people, you're going to get more value out of it than healing one person. And if that one person dies, well, after you guys win the team fight because you have so many people doing so much more damage, then you can just fly in, res that person, and you're back in the fight, right? So, again, as Mercy, you almost never want to pull out your pistol. It's... That's just unlucky. They're, they committed a lot of ults there. They didn't need... Yeah. So. Um, 
I'm going to say your use of Valkyrie there wasn't terrible, right? You know, you used it at the start of the team fight as your team was pushing in. It's just unfortunate that your team was feeding and taking a lot of unnecessary damage and then didn't really push in with it. Um, Valkyrie and Bob is actually a really good combination. I think it's underrated. It's just unfortunate that Bob was not in a great spot, but again, that's not on you. Clean bill of health. They EMP'd and visored, and somehow your team is still winning this fight. That is amazing. Now they're coalescing. Yeah, don't go for that res, that's a risky res. Heal your Reinhardt, heal your Reinhardt. Your Moira could have saved your Reinhardt if she was healing instead of DPSing. You're healing a full health target there, you know. That's one thing you have to pay attention to as Mercy is how you get value, right? So your Sigma was at full health and he had a lot of shields there, right? So you can damage boost him. And he's 1v1ing a Sombra. Sombra honestly doesn't do that much damage, so you could be just damage boosting him through it, even if he's not at full health, right? Even if his health starts ticking down just a little bit, keep on damage boosting him, right? Because he can... Uh, if he hits one volley with your damage boost, he won't outright kill her, I don't think, but he's going to do enough damage that she's going to translocate away, right? So, again, as Mercy, it's not your job to keep your team at full health. You need to find value, right? Um, and so in that case, that's one of those times where damage boosting is just providing more value than healing. Um, you know, you were also kind of bouncing around, kind of, you kind of Guardian Angeled into danger there, which is why you died, you just Guardian Angeled into their Moira, um, you could have stayed on that side of cart and been safe, but this team fight is chaos. I don't think that was a great use of Sigma ult, but... So at this point too, you also need to be telling your team that they have no healing, right? They have no supports, both their supports are dead, so that they need to be playing safe. Um, you can climb a lot of ranks, like you could probably easily climb into Platinum just by shot calling. Um, again, I've been through Bronze, I've been through Silver, I know how hard it is and those ranks to get everybody in voice chat. Um, but if you can, even if you get two or three people in voice chat and just start shot calling and saying things like, hey, you have no supports, just play slow or back out. At this point, when they start getting picks, just say, die on cart, right? Die on cart or get out if you can. Uh, the only one left alive on cart is Sigma, and he has no escape ability, so just tell your Sigma to die on cart as quickly as you can uh, so you can get a full respawn. Also, your Bastion hasn't used his ult yet. Uh, Bastion's built one ult, and uh, your Ash is already on her second. So... That's another thing you can look at, is you can see that your Ash is doing much more work than your Bastion, so you could probably focus on damage boosting your Ash instead of your Bastion, just because your Ash seems to be more effective, excuse me, more effective than Bastion in this case. Um, you should also be telling your Moira to not push in, because you guys cannot 2v6 this thing. Yep. Just back away, back away, run away, run away, run away. Wrong way, Moira. You're running the wrong way. Okay. So, there, again, you you and Moira are just are feeding. You're dying. You're staggering yourselves. Um, you should just not be there, right? When you lose that team fight, just fall back to spawn, right? Wait in spawn for your team. You're safe there. There's no way they can kill you. You're behind cover. Just wait for a full regroup, right? Because um, now all you're doing is staggering yourself, right? The rest of your team has respawned, but the supports are dead again, right? And then this uh, Moira is going to... Uh, there's Moira is getting good value out of her Coalescence because she killed you and your Ash, staggering you guys even further. So now your team has to wait until the three of you respawn before you can push in again. And it's this staggering effect where... The cart's not moving. So a lot of people think, oh, I need to touch cart. I need to touch cart. I just got to run out there and touch cart. Well, no, because what's going to happen is you're going to 3v6 the cart, and you're all going to die. And then while you guys are dying, the other three of you are going to respawn, 
and then all of a sudden you guys respawn and your team is dying as you're pushing back to point and so there's three of you alive and you're fighting another 3v6 and it's this cycle where you're trickling in one, two, three at a time and you're just never going to win that fight. But your Bastion switched off, so that's a plus. What is going on? Yes. So again, now... Oh, your Moira didn't kill... Their Moira didn't kill your Ash somehow, which is... Kind of impressive. Yeah, your team is just trickling in, feeding, and dying at this point. Call for a regroup. Just wait, wait, and spawn. Don't, don't do this, right? Just tell, tell everyone to die. Get back. Play safe. And you're feeding. So this right here, this is all just decision making. This is just not waiting for a full regroup. Um, so your team is now fighting a... Well, your team has a couple of picks, so they might actually win now. Uh, oh god. <laughs> this, is, this is good. This is good. This is all you can do against a visor. Call for help. That was that was good. Good jukes. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, call for help, too, when something like that happens. Um, it was good that you found cover very quickly. You stayed alive, so Soldier wasted a visor. That was all good. That was really nice. Um, little, um, not needed on the Valkyrie here, again. Valkyrie is one of those alts that you want to initiate the team fight with. Right now, the only people left alive is you can hear a Sombra and they got a Lucio. So you're not going to get a lot of value out of this ultimate. Uh, just hold on to it and wait until the enemy team re-engages. Right? Again, when you're Valking like that, it's generally not a good idea to pull out your pistol and duel. Um, huge EMP, holy hell. But, you, you know, it's usually not a good idea to go out and duel, right? Just damage boost, because you're close enough that you're going to damage boost everybody on your team. That Sombra's going to die, that Soldier's going to get no value, because you've got uh, Ash and Sigma who can do a lot of damage to him. Um, yeah, just focus on damage boosting. You're going to get so much more value out of your damage boost than your pistol there. Um... But you guys all got hacked now, so that is a huge EMP by your Sombra. Their Sombra, but there is no one to follow up on it. So now would be a good time to Valk, right? Because their enemy team's pushing in, right? They're, they've got their Zarya in there, um, their Roadhog's alive somewhere, they've got their Moira, you can hear the Soldier on the left, right? This is as close to a team fight as you're going to get. Now would be a good time to Valk, because you're essentially fighting a 3v6, and so with your Valkyrie, you could just win this team fight very quickly, and you capture second point. Yeah, so that was just kind of questionable, questionable positioning. Actually, let's just go back and watch that again. Watch that pan out. So I'm okay with this positioning here. Um, you know, off the start, right? The one thing you do want to be aware of, you know, you've got Hog to your left. You can hear Soldier somewhere. Uh, so you do have to be a little bit careful. Actually, you know, what you did there wasn't bad. You know, you recognize that you were being threatened from behind, so kind of flying back behind your team this way, but you also put yourself in line of fire of the Sombra. So, th that one was just a tough one, right? You're being attacked from multiple angles, it was hard to find a good spot of cover. Um, yeah, that wasn't terrible, actually, I take that back. That, that was okay. Um, again, you know, you, you always want to try to be playing around some kind of cover, so realistically, you could kind of be behind stairs here just to try and minimize sight lines or whatnot, or... You could even be, again, hugging Cart and just kind of crouching around Cart, playing Ring Around the Rosie here to avoid damage. But. Your Sombra wasted EMP, which is good. So, when May. Also, when May goes into Ice Block, she can heal herself up to full, pretty much. So, you don't need to heal that. Let her be an Ice Block. You get, again. Um, I'm going to talk about value a lot. So healing a May and Ice Block is kind of redundant, right? Because she can pretty much heal herself up to full health. You don't need to assist that. Your Reinhardt, however, doesn't have full heal. So um, it looks like you do like you do jump onto Reinhardt very quickly. Um, so that's good. You recognize your mistake there, but uh, you know you just you don't need to heal a May and Ice Block. Your Sigma wasted his ult. My god, did Moira heal? Got 
This is good, you're damage boosting Ash, I like it. Um, again, don't pull a pistol here, uh, damage boost your Sigma, keep damage boosting your Ash, even damage boost your Mei. Right, so part of that too is building ultimates, right? So you build ultimate, so if you're damage boosting somebody, they build ultimates faster because they're doing more damage. In addition, you also build your ultimate, right? Whereas if you pull out your pistol, well, you're just trying to 1v1 here. You're not building your ultimate unless you're hitting your shots. Same thing with your DPS. They're building their ultimate if they hit their shots, so they're doing it a little bit slower. It's just, it's more efficient to damage boost your DPS, right? Especially because the damage boosted Ash, um, I think can just one hit headshot a Sombra. It, and she's at lower health too, so even a body shot from a damage boosted Ash should kill a Sombra who's down, what is that, like 50, 60 health or something like that? Um, yeah. Let's get you back out there. Looks like you were just trying to spot check there. Honestly, that, that was fine for the most part. You know, you're damage boosting, you're actually trying to deal with the flanker. Um, and then you flew back to your team. So that, that was all good and fine. Um, you know, you should at this point, you should top up your Reinhardt because uh, your Moira is uh, ulting here, which is fine. Like, uh, Coalescence is a very, very good offensive ult. Uh, it can apply a lot of pressure to the enemy team. So this is fine. So you, you basically have two options here. One, you could actually damage boost your uh, Moira through Coalescence. I can't remember if damage boost applies to Coalescence or not, but... Uh, you could also heal up your Reinhardt. That's good. Oh, there's a Roadhog. You know what, I'm okay with that Valk. You know, team fight was initiating. You were kind of trying to keep your team alive. Their soldiers just jumped off the map, that's harsh. Damage boost Bob. Actually, damage boosting your um, Reinhardt there as he's swinging on the Lucia was fine as well. Yeah, your Moira first, yep. Or your Ash, sorry. Oh, that's scary for the Ash. You probably could have saved your Ash there uh, from the Moira. Um, I think you do as much healing as Moira does damage, so that's why you saw it kind of bouncing up and down there. But, you know, you could have kept your Ash alive. But you guys capped first point with time remaining, so that's good. Initiating match. Five. So, things I noticed after the first round, um, position-wise, you you died a lot because you were kind of out in the open, and uh, you died a lot pushing second point because your team was just slowly trickling in. Um, so, biggest things, try to play around corner, pl try to play around cover. Um, that goes for any support that you were playing, always try to find some kind of hard cover. Um, Other than that, um, for the most part, like you, you did pretty well with your with your beam management, your target selection. Um, you know, you, you focused mostly on damage boosting, except you know your Moira went DPS Moira, so you kind of had to balance healing more, which is just unfortunate, which is not what you should be doing given this healer composition. But that's all. That's all fine. That's kind of out of your control. Um, yeah. So. Biggest thing to, I would say, focus on your positioning first. You know, your your B management's fine. Um, your Valk usage wasn't terrible. You know, at least you pressed Q. You didn't hold on to it forever, which is good. I see too many lower ELO players just holding on to their ultimates for far, far too long. Um, again, just keep in mind, remember that your uh, your Valkyrie, your ultimate, is best used to initiate team fights right at the start or just before you guys engage. Um, and nine times out of ten, it is always better to damage boost instead of heal, especially when you're running a Moira, because Moiras who know how to play Moira are going to be there healing their team. And uh, especially when they're initiating the team fight like that, they're not going to be in the backline DPSing. Um, 
So, you know, as I said, it's, you get more value out of your ultimate damage boosting three people than healing one, right? Um, other than that, it was a pretty good round. Uh, you know, you said that your team telling you was was telling you you weren't doing bad. No, you're you're doing fine as Mercy, I think, especially because you're running pirate ship. It's kind of necessary. Um, you know, if the other thing I would say is that if you know you've got this Moira that's going DPS Moira, you know, and isn't focusing so much on healing, you could switch over to Anna and or Baptiste or something like that uh, to a secondary main healer and. Uh, that way you can just heal your team, and it would allow that Moira to be more of a damage character. Again, not Moira's job. There, there is a way. Like there is a way to properly play Moira where you could still do tons of damage and heal your team. But it's a balancing act that you don't see until like starting in plat, really high gold, low plat. Um. Yeah, that's it's just yeah. Anyway. So damage boosting Ash off the start here. Your Reinhardt's in eight. He's going for a cheeky charge, but he's going to die in higher ranks again. Nothing you can do there. The only thing that can happen is Moira can throw him a heal ball and just say good luck. Um, again, never put yourself in a bad situation to try and save your Reinhardt or any teammate that is in a bad position. Um, but I like what you're doing here so far. Uh, Ash should be on high ground. But, you know, you're hiding behind a corner, you're damage boosting your Ash, which is good. I like that you're damage boosting Ash because she was the DPS that was doing things last match. So, I shouldn't, that, that's kind of mean. Like, you know, you had Bastion at the start and he was doing fine and then switched to May and May was doing work. But, um, you know, you could also be damage boosting Junkrat here. Um, really, either DPS is fine. But, yeah, your, your Ash is good. I would definitely stay damage boosting your Ash. Call for healing. So Monkey wasted his jump there. So Monkey dove on you, which is fine, but he used his jump to get to you, which means you can Guardian Angel away from him for free, right? Again, you didn't really have anyone to Guardian Angel to, so you just kind of backed around a corner, which is fine. But when Monkey jumps on you, like when he uses his jump to get to you, you have a free use of Guardian Angel. Um, in higher ranks, better Monkeys are just going to like drop in from high ground or engage on you. Um without using their jump, so that when you Guardian Angel away, they can use their jump to follow you, and then basically kill you. So good monkeys uh, can kill you very quickly, so when that happens, all you can do is just ask for help. At that point, you need to call to your Moira and be like, hey, I need healing, I need healing, and you should fly to your Moira, right? Because she is really the only one who can keep you alive. Um, your Ash too, I guess, because she's got her coach gun and she can push monkey away from you, but definitely be calling to your other healer, your other support, and ask for healing. Because better monkeys can kill you. So Sombra wasted her hack on you, which, I mean, isn't optimal. Your Moira, again, DPSing, died. So at this point, um, what you need to be doing... So what your team is doing is good. Um, you know, you need to be telling your team that you're down your main healer, you're down your uh, off tank, right? You guys need to be backing up, right? You are fighting a 4v6, essentially. Sure, their Sombra's going to respawn in a second here, so... Your entire team needs to back up. Like, just keep backing up towards spawn. Give them space. Don't take this fight. Don't hold here. You might have been able to save your Junkrat there. So, you know Mercy's Super Jump, but it doesn't look like you know Mercy's Bunny Hop. So, Mercy's Bunny Hop works in a similar way that Super Jump does. So, uh, the Bunny Hop basically... Um, you can essentially leapfrog over teammates. So right there, um, let's just back up a second here. So you're healing up your Reinhardt, which is fine. Um, healing up your Junkrat, healing up your Ash. You could switch your Junkrat right now and you might have been able to save him. Just a little bit late, which is fine. Here you're being pressured, so it's good. You're flying away. I like this. I really like what you did here. You know, you backed up to try and Blake run of sight. And, you know, you flew over to your um, Ash, which is good. But right here. So the way the bunny hop works is when you Guardian Angel over to a teammate, um, if you press space just as Guardian Angel ends, you press space kind of at the same time that you would when you do Mercy's uh, Super Jump. And what's going to happen 
is instead of like landing here, when you press space, you are going to jump and leapfrog over top of them. And then you're going to land back here. And then what you do, like what that allows you to do is it just allows you to go farther, right? You land back here. You are now behind your ash. You have the opportunity to hide behind cover. Ash is between you and the Moira, so the Moira can't easily access you. Um, you can use this bunny hop to get to teammates who are farther away. You know, like if you had... You know, realistically, if you wanted to try to get to your Reinhardt, you know, you could uh, Guardian Angel over to Junkrat's Corpse and Super Jump or Bunny Hop over to your Reinhardt. Again, your Reinhardt should just be dying on cart right now. He shouldn't be holding up a shield. Nothing you can do about that. A little piece of Mercy Tech. Um, there, there are guides on YouTube you can watch as to how to exactly do Mercy's Bunny Hop, but it's, it's one of those little pieces of tech that's very easy to do, and it's good to know. You're standing out in the open again. Follow your ash. Yeah, so you died there because you just you went the wrong way and you stood out in the open instead of flying to your ash, you went behind cover. Back in the fight. Get into position. That was a good res. Unlucky that your ash went and fed. Don't fall here. Okay, so... The reason I said don't Valk there uh, is because this team fight is lost. You know, um, a Valkyrie is not very good for sustain, right? Um, I think it does 60 healing per second and chains, right? Keep in mind, Moira's primary fire, her left click, does 65 healing per second. Um, Mercy's Valk, I think, does 60 or 65. Right? It does less healing than... Or it's e either equal to or less healing than just Moira's left click, right? Um, and so sustain-wise, it's just not very good, right? Moira's, between her um, heal orb and her left click, she has more healing than you do as Mercy. Um, so Valkyrie is not used for sustain. It is best used to engage, right? Um, as I explained earlier, uh, so this... Is just a, a poor use of Valkyrie. Uh, this team fight's lost. Everybody's going to die. So it's, you're going to keep people alive a little bit longer. But you know now they're popping a couple of big ultimates, and they're just going to melt through any kind of healing that you could potentially do. You know your Reinhardt also YOLO charged into their backline and died. So this, you know, not an optimal use of Valkyrie there. I must go where I'm needed. Yeah, see, there's the bunny hop. Up your ash. That's good. I like your positioning here. Uh, okay, a little bit less so now because you're back out in the corner, but where you were standing was good. You were kind of behind cover. Don't worry. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, when Risky Res, the fact you got it off is amazing. So, uh, you know, when Monkey's booping somebody away from you, uh, there's no way you can get to him. Just don't bother to it. Um, try to focus on the people you can heal. Um, again, you guys are trickling in, you're staggering, and they're just kind of steamrolling you here. Uh, so there's not a whole lot you could have done there. You might have been able to keep your Ash alive for a second longer. Um, so, again... Uh, this res, looking at it, so once again, you are wide out in the open, you have no cover, you're not going to get this res off, right? Um, when you go for res, you always want to be sure your team is around to help you. Um, your Moira popped Coalescence for some reason, uh, whatever. Um, so you're not going to get this res off, and even if you did, uh, this res is a bad res, because all that's going to happen is they're going to kill you, so that, uh, you, you know their soldier and their Winston is going to get ult charge from killing you. And you also rezzed Ash, and so they're just going to kill Ash again, and so they get another 200 points, because Ash has 200 health, so they're going to get another 200 points of ult charge from Ash. So you just rezzed Ash to die and feed enemy ult charge. Right? So again, at this point, it's one of those situations where you have to recognize that the team fight is lost, so you just need to die, ideally on cart, as quickly as possible to um, minimize the time it takes for your team to regroup and recontest. 
because cards about halfway through here so you know if you all died quickly you could recontest this before they capped second point although because your moira is ulting now um like she just ulted like your your entire team is dead and your moira decides to ult you know you, you say that your team was flaming you for not doing well no 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 you're, you're doing fine it's your moira that's doing poorly here but um yeah, so this was a bad res to go for. Um, your team needs to just die and regroup. However, because Moira is ulting here, she's not going to die very quickly. She's hard to kill when she's ulting. Um, so you're, you're because of because your Moira ulted here, you're not going to be able to recontest this. Or rather, if you do, all you're going to do is trickle in and die. Okay. Brent should just push W there, but... Oh, an Ash threw Bob on cart? That's huge. Yeah, at this point, to as Mercy, I really like how your Ash is playing. Like, your Ash is doing some serious work. Like, her, her Bob usage has been pretty good. She's been getting picks. Um, when you're playing Mercy, you need to recognize like which of your DPS is kind of carrying right, your game, right? So you need to recognize that your Ash is doing some serious work here, and you have to pocket your Ash and do your best to enable the Ash to do as much work and be as effective as possible. Um, again, your Junkrat's not doing bad. Um, you know, he's spamming in damage, he's breaking down shields, but uh, Ash is... Uh, I, I would say Ash is definitely the one kind of carrying this fight as of right now. So definitely help Rode as much as you can. That's unlucky. Where's your Moira at? Hello, DPS Moira. In the back line. Instead of helping your team. So, you know, I mean, you died there because they, they, they had a DPS Moira who came and pressured you and killed you. Um, if your Moira had been around, you probably would have survived that. Right? And so right now your team is dying on cart because they don't have any supports. So I'm this Moira, right? You can see this Moira going in the back line, DPSing and killing things. And you know, I bet you that Moira thinks she's doing well be because she's securing those kills, right? When really she's not. She that's not her job, right? Her job is to keep her tanks alive. Her tanks are dying. You are dying because there is no support from your main support from your main healer. So this is one of those things where. Overwatch kind of promotes bad play in the lower ranks because Moira is going in the back line because she is securing those kills. Um, she thinks she probably thinks that she's doing well, that she's playing well, right? When, okay, sure, I mean, yeah, you're securing kills, but you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You are not uh, playing your role. Um, and so that's why, you know, you're kind of stuck in, in this elo right is because you are making these decisions and they are working out for you but they were the wrong decisions to make right had moira been on cart healing your team you wouldn't have died your reinhardt wouldn't have died your junkrat wouldn't have died right because moira has just so much healing she could have kept your entire team alive through that right between you know, she could have healed you up, and between you and Moira, you could have out-healed through the Coalescence. You could have kept your Junkrat alive. Junkrat probably could have uh, killed Moira through Coalescence, or you could have been damage-boosting your Ash, who could have killed through Coalescence, right? Um, You guys could have survived this, and you could have held point if your Moira had been there helping you. Um, Again, this is one of those things where you have to recognize what your team is doing and just try to play around your team. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, You know, there you kind of just got hunted down by Moira. There's not much you can do. Um, this is one of those situations where you have to realize the team fight is lost and you need to back out. What a curious feeling. The payload has reached the checkpoint. 
You have the opportunity to, just avoid that Moira. Don't fall here. So, again, reason I said I don't Valk there, um, there were four of you here. The other ones uh, got long spawn, right? They respawned back there, so this isn't a full team fight. Um, your team just needs to be backing out, right? So your team should just be walking this way, using these pillars as cover, trying to back in towards castle. Um, you know, that, that Valkyrie was wasted, especially when you start getting pressuring by the Moira. Um, when you're down low on health... Uh, your self-heal is increased a little bit, I think, when you're in Valkyrie, so it can uh, increase your sustain. But again, when you're only on 40 health, you know, even if Soldier didn't Pfizer you, it only takes a couple hits from Soldier to kill you. Two hits, actually, because Soldier does 20 damage per shot, I believe. Uh, so, yeah. That was just uh, another poor use of Valkyrie. Again, Valkyrie is a initiate team fight. Um... And I mean team fight. I mean a full six versus six, usually. So, you know, as you guys push in here, now would be an okay time to use Valkyrie, right? As you guys are now regrouped and ready to push in to recontest cart. Yeah, right here. You're all regrouped. Now is the perfect time to Valk. You got an. Perfect time to Valk, right? You got one pick here, so that's huge. You uh, pop Valkyrie, you get up and away from the Winston, you damage boost your entire team. This Winston dies, your team pushes cart, their entire team dies, you win team fight. Easy. You could damage boost Bob here? Yeah, I like it. So... Um, one thing I haven't really seen you do much as Mercy is kind of look around. You're uh, looking a lot at the target you're healing, um, which is fine. You know, I, I do it too. Everybody gets caught of it. You should always be looking around. And remember earlier in the video when I said, um, you know, you always have to be aware of everything that's happening. You have to be aware of your team is, of where your team is, of where the enemy team is. You hear that McCree pop high noon. You can hear it coming from somewhere to the right. Look around for it immediately. Try and see where that McCree is and break line of sight. You know, you were behind cover, the McCree couldn't see you, but I didn't know exactly where the McCree is because you didn't turn to look, right? So you couldn't have known exactly where that McCree is. As soon as he pops high noon, just turn to look, right? Your beam is auto lock on. You don't have to be looking at your target. Your beam is just going to stay on that target no matter where you're looking. So always be looking around. Um, always try to be aware of where everything is. So... That was another one of those situations where you kind of got caught out of position. Um, again, I think you got pressured out of position because of that high noon. You were trying to find some other uh, some other cover. But, um... Go follow your, uh, follow your Reaper. Yeah, so... You pulled out your pistol there instead of following your Reaper. Again. You could have followed your Reaper there and helped him do some work. Your Junkrat with a huge tire. Um... Saving the point. Res that Moira, Res your Moira, Res your Moira, Res your Moira. Your team doesn't need healing. Res your Moira, Res your Moira, Res your Moira, Res your Moira. Damage with your... Uh, C9, C9, C9. Okay, so that was good. Uh, the only thing I would have done there is I would have rezzed Moira. Uh, your team wasn't taking a whole lot of damage. Uh, sure, you're right outside of spawn, but it was a Lala and team fight, and your team was pushing in, uh, forcing down those kills, so you needed that sustain there. So if you had rezzed Moira, and you guys had pushed up with your Reinhardt, uh, your Reinhardt probably would have survived. You could have damage boosted him through his shatter and secured all those kills. Okay, so um, I'm honestly okay with that Valk timing. Um, you know, the team fight is kind of ongoing. Um, you have the numbers advantage here, and so by using Valkyrie, you are just securing those last three kills. Um, you just positioned yourself poorly. Like, you heard Soldier pop Visor, so the last thing you want to do when Soldier pops Visor is fly up in the air, because that makes him... Like, he cannot miss, really. Um, so it just makes you... Or it makes it easier for him to hit you. Um, you know, you flew up in the air, he got a couple of shots off on you. 
Um, again, you could have honestly just popped Valkyrie and stayed here, or just very quickly flew this way and just stayed as low as you could. Right? Don't press space, don't fly up in the air, make yourself hard to hit. Or honestly, you could have popped Valkyrie and flown this way and then just... Right? Because you move so quickly when you're Valkyrie. Right? You pop Valk, you fly this way, and then you stay here and you damage boost through this doorway. Right? And then Soldier cannot see with his visor. Good little bunny hop, monkey's hunting you down. I like the ring around the rosy on the cart. Risky res, but it worked out. Um, honestly, you guys are buying for time right now. Your Moira was still alive. I think that was an okay res to do. Again, it was a risky res uh, because you had no cover, you had no protection, but you know you're you're buying time at this point. So biggest things from you, um, again, your your beam usage is actually pretty good. I, I'm impressed with it. Um, you're healing the right targets, you're damage boosting the right targets, um, you just tend to use... Uh, you tend to put yourself in bad positions to try and get to those targets. Um, again, you should try to focus on playing around cover, trying to find some kind of corner to play around recognize where the enemy team is and try to minimize your line of sight to the enemy team right play safe value your life above everyone else on your team okay so now you've switched up you're running a lucio instead of the moira um you are now running two off healers right moira or mercy is no longer considered a primary healer so you do not have the sustain necessary to keep up a protect the president pirate ship composition. Um, yes, you having mercy for the damage boost is a, is great, but at this point, if you're running a Lucio, you need to switch to, like, Baptiste, if you're running Protect the President, would probably be the optimal pick. Um, or you could go Moira yourself, or... I, I would say Ana... Ana would be okay as well, but because you're running two off-healers, or two flex supports, you just don't have a lot of sustain. Right? So, and it, you should be at peak performance level. yeah, your Lucio is going to be right at Lucio and try and duel. So, Al Shaheem here, he is uh, basically a DPS support, right? He's playing Moira like a DPS. He's playing Reddit Lucio. Um, honestly, Lucio in this comp, there's not much that Lucio can do, right? So Lucio is just a, a bad pick for this composition. Um, but again, nothing you can do about that Lucio. Uh, so your damage boosting, uh, your Hanzo here, which is fine. Uh, again, you're out in the open a little bit. There's un the unfortunate thing about this first little push on Havana is that there's just nothing really you can do. Uh, there's not a whole lot of cover. The, your best bet for cover is to play in this building, right? You can come into the right here. You can still damage boost, and you can just dance around these pillars, breaking line of sight. They can't see you from high ground if they're... Um, in this building here, you can just use these pillars to break line of sight with them. You can still use your damage boost. This is where you want to be, right? Right here, you're standing out in the open. Um, never trust shields, right? Yes, you are running double shields, so you can kind of hide behind them to break line of sight with the high ground. But again, Reinhardt can drop his shield to fire strike. Um, Sigma can recall his shield, right? They can just pull them back at a moment's notice without letting anybody know. And... Um, if I'm an enemy DPS, I'm kind of just waiting for that to happen, right? There's a lot of times where you're going to have like an enemy Hanzo or an enemy soldier or enemy McCree, and they're going to be spamming damage into the shield, but their crosshairs are going to be lined up on a squishy behind the shield just for that off case where if that shield goes down, that shot's going to miss the shield and hit the squishy behind the shield, right? And so that's what higher rank DPS are going to start doing is they're, yes, going to burn down shields, but while they're burning down shields, they're going to be aiming at the people behind the shields for that lucky shot when Reinhardt drops for the fire strike, or when Sigma recalls the shield, or when the shield breaks. So, always avoid open spaces like this. This is better, you're kind of hugging carts a little bit.
so you tried to get away from the Moira there, you know, you were on low health, you had taken some poke damage, and um, you were doing your best to break line of sight, not much you could have done there. You know, at that point, you just try to want to try and stay uh, closer to Cart because Cart heals you, and uh, Lucy was actually around, so you were within range. You might have been able, uh, you might have been able to stay alive if you were closer to Cart to utilize the Cart's healing. But the Cart only heals like 10 health per second or something like that. It's not much. That was a bad bunny hop because you put yourself in a bad position. And here's where you lose point. Yeah. So. Again, your, your two deaths there were just because of poor positioning, that's all. Or, or I guess your second death was them just recontesting and pushing in, killing everyone, but... Okay, so you're on Ana now. Um, Ana is considered a main healer, so you can once again uh, go back to focusing on damage boosting your DPS. Uh, Junkrat's going for a cheeky flank. Um, your Ash is wide out in the open, but you're damage boosting your Ash, which is fine. Again, Ash is wide out in the open. I don't like where your Ash is positioned, but where you are is perfectly fine. I really like this. You know, um, you're working around your team, right? You're using this car as cover. This is good. I like it. Don't don't peek out like this. Take care of your Ana, yep. Now now your team's rotating. You need to work with this rotation. So I really liked where you started. Um I like that you're not standing still, however, your strafing is putting you out in the open again, right? Kind of crouch and use a bit smaller AD strafing, I would say, uh just to try and make best use of that cover. Um your team is now rotating back around this cover. Uh you need to be flying back over to this side, right? Uh, because the cart's going to come up this way, and if the cart pushes up too far here, it now splits you from the rest of your team, and you are going to die. So you need to be behind your team on this side. Right, now Diva's pressuring you. You fly back over. Good. You're out in the open, though. Try it, and... So, right here, what I would be doing is hugging this corner. Right. Again, you are wide out in the open here. Uh, if you hug this corner tightly, you break line of sight with the enemy team. Right. They cannot see you. They cannot shoot you unless they go on a hard flank or until the cart pushes up this way. Right. Where you are right now, they can get an angle on you. Right. If they decide to push high ground here, or if they just take a wider angle this way, they can see you. Right. Hug this corner. Hug this wall. It will be your friend. So again, you're wide out in the open here. Take care of your Anna. Yep. So again, Anna is a frag uh, fragile old lady. So whenever you're playing with an Anna, um, always keep an eye on her. She doesn't have, she has no means of escape. Um, you know, she does have sleep dart and nade, which can really, really help. But uh, you know, it is your job as your secondary support to kind of take care and protect your Anna as best you can. Looks like your Ana is still turning to DPS, so she's healing up your run a little bit. So, with that res, um, it was close enough to this thing that you probably could have started the res and then, like, just backed up a little bit around corner. Again, I would still be asking for cover. Like, Sigma can just put his shield up, like, right here and protect you completely from that. Um, but, you know, that was a good res. Um, you know, you're on defense and. Got that safety res off. Uh, this is a good Valk, I think. Um, you know, the team fight's pretty much going again. Um, at this point, healing is okay. That was a bad use of Guardian Angel. Stay on your Ash. Uh, 
so that's all okay. It's, it's unfortunate you're Ryan there, there's not much you could have done. Um, again, you have single target healing and your healing is relatively low. Um, there's only so much you can do for sustain. Huge tire junk rat. So they just kind of C9'd cart there. Um, honestly, that was pretty good. Um, I would say your your biggest area you need to work on is your positioning. Um, you know, there are a lot of times where you would just fly right out into the middle of the road like you like you did there, uh, Valking. Um, you know, you just you flew right into the middle and took a lot of damage. Um, you spent a lot of time kind of AD strafing, which is fine. You'd never want to be standing still in Overwatch, but uh, you know, you're still putting yourself in a, a bad position when you're doing that. Always try to find cover, always try to find some kind of corner to play around. Um Always be looking around as Mercy. Um, look where your team is. Look where the enemy team is. With your team, always look, all right, if I get pressured here, who can I fly to, right? Who can um, I fly to to get out of line of sight of the enemy to protect myself, right? Uh, when you're looking at the enemy, look at where they are and think about, okay, where can I be standing? Where can I be that minimizes their line of sight on me, right? You want to you want to make yourself as hard to hit as possible. As Mercy, um, there is nothing that benefits you from being within line of sight of the enemy, right? Uh, you don't have to throw damage orbs like Moira does. You don't have to hit sleeps or anti-nades like Ana does. You know, you don't have to spam damage like Lucio does. There is no reason for you to be anywhere near the enemy's line of sight, right? So try to find a position, try to find some kind of cover that um, puts you out of their line of sight. Um, other than that, your beam usage was pretty good. Um, you know, you, you balance between damage boosting and healing effectively. Your target selection was good. I liked that you were focusing on damage boosting your DPS as much as possible. Um, it's just unfortunate that, you know, for the first two rounds or whatever, your, uh, Moira was being DPS Moira instead of healing your tanks. Uh, you probably could have won that without having it to go to overtime, but... Um, Valk usage was okay. Um... Again, remember that Valkyrie is not good for sustain. It is best used to initiate team fights with, and don't worry about letting a teammate die. Right? They might get mad at you in chat, but um, especially at lower ranks. But again, you're going to get more value out of damage boosting three people than healing one person. Right? You're gonna win the fight faster that way. You're gonna win the team fight, and you can always res them after the fight is won, or you capture point and they just respawn next to you anyway. Um, other than that, yeah, I think you did all right. Um, focus on improving your positioning, um, and you won't die as much. And I think you can definitely climb. Good job.